Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right, we got a special video for you today. This presentation is going to be all about EarPro, and we're going to be breaking into um, some of our experiences that we've had over the years with various types of EarPro. We're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of various types of EarPro and discuss some of the safety considerations that you want to keep in mind when you are choosing uh, the type of EarPro you're going to use. Obviously, firearms are very loud in many cases, so you want to make sure you're protecting your hearing. Uh, it's not unlike if you were running, let's say, your tractor or your lawnmower and you want to wear ear pro to protect your hearing from the motor. Um, firearms are very much the same way. Uh, obviously, they can be quite loud, so having good ear pro is certainly important. Uh, we are going to break into some concepts and sort of dive into some things, and we've got some ear pro here that Chad and I have been using over the years. Some of this stuff's a little newer for us. Some of it's been around the block a time or two. In fact, one set I'm looking at here has been around, I know, at least 20 years. And uh, and we'll just kind of break in. I, I guess maybe the way we could kind of dive into this, Chad, is to start out by discussing safety and protocol and mm -hmm. things like that, like what, like what EarPro is actually doing to, to help us. And then we'll kind of start real basic mm -hmm. in terms of the technology and work our way up. What sure. do you think? I think that's fine. Um, so... Anybody who's ever shot guns knows that one of the safety considerations is to wear ear protection, right? Uh, you know, because different organizations, OSHA namely, they say that impulse sounds, which is what a gunshot is, uh, if you're above 140 dB, which is decibels, that's what uh, sound pressure levels are measured in. If you're above 140, which most gunshots are, you're going to do some damage to your hearing. So when you wear hearing protection, you're basically muffling that sound and preventing all of that impulse from entering your ear canal and damaging your hearing. So most ear pro is going to reduce the incoming sound pressure level to a certain degree that is considered safe. Now that's gunshots. Now like uh, continuous sounds like say running a chainsaw or running a lawnmower or something like that. I believe the figure is 85 decibels is what can damage your hearing with continuous sound. So that's Literally, like running a chainsaw, you can get well above like 90 up to 100, I believe. So it's um, not necessarily the, like a gunshot is one loud and sudden impulse. Yeah, for a And whereby duration. something like a mower or a chainsaw mm -hmm. is a slightly lower impulse in terms of the volume, the dBs, but mm -hmm. it's continuous. So yeah, it's it, a, it has it's it a, does lower, a different type of yeah, uh, It's damage. a lower sound pressure level. It's not really an impulse. It's like a continuous sound. But yeah. the, the continuous sounds can damage your hearing quicker. Um, and at a lower decibel level than the impulse sounds, because impulse sounds are a very short duration. We're talking milliseconds for a gunshot, for that impulse to peak and then die off. Um, but just to give you guys a little bit of background, um, there's a lot of different volumes out there, some by like Alan Paulson, you know, about silencer history and performance, things like that, that go into um, a lot of the details of hearing damage and what can actually damage your hearing with suppressed gunshots and things like that and loud gunshots. Um, and we'll discuss some more of those details throughout the video, but, um, uh, hearing protection is just one of those things. Like if you don't ever wear hearing protection throughout your life, you're going to regret it at some point. You know, I've got family members that never wore hearing protection and now they're wearing hearing aids like in their fifties. Yeah. You know, they shoot good. all the time. Um, and, when you when you think about how loud gunshots actually are, um, like just take for example, okay, I'm just going to use these Howard lights as an example to start with. Okay, these are probably the most well known ears out there, right? Okay, we use these things on a regular basis. We've been using them for years and years and years. All right, they'll reduce the incoming decibel levels to I believe about 22, like about 22 dB. So you think about a normal gunshot. And um, I've shot a lot of guns on the meter, on the BNK 2209, suppressed and loud. Um, and at the ear, like, say, take a, a normal AR, it could be topping like 160 dB easily. So, it's loud. Yeah. Especially that port pressure. It's got it's yeah. right there at your ear. So yeah. you got all that you know, gas is coming yeah. out of the port. It's real loud right yeah. there. So on, on auto loaders, you've got that open action, right? <clears throat> so you're going to have higher sound pressure level on that particular rifle than you would on a bolt action. A bolt action will be a little bit quieter at the ear, uh, down in like maybe the mid to low 150s. Um, but it's still going to be loud. It's not hearing safe, obviously, if we're using that 140 dB standard. But when you put on a pair of ears, all right, 
you're not going to say 22 dB off. Maybe upwards of like 28 dB, right? So that'll put you down below that 140 dB threshold. Okay, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully y'all are able to follow this. But yeah, yeah. you're reducing the sound pressure level coming into your ear down below a quote unquote hearing safe level, right? Yeah, what OSHA would determine yes. to be a safe hearing level. Now, one of the details that I'll talk about very briefly, but I'm not going to get into is the amount of that that sound pressure level that you can be exposed to throughout like a 24-hour period. Even a reduced amount. Yes. So if you're close to the 140 dB threshold, there's only a short duration of time total, okay, that you can be exposed to that uh, pressure level and not cause yourself some hearing damage. Um, when you get into like 22s, like you mentioned earlier, those sound pressure levels are even lower. And if you wear ears with them, you're going to get down into like maybe the – 100s, 110s, okay, with a lot of a lot of different 22s that are out there. You could basically shoot those all day. You can literally really shoot them all day because the the length of that exposure is much greater before you in, induce any hearing damage. If that makes any sense, it does. Okay. I think it's worth mentioning too that um, in this situation, I know a lot of people. You know, we've always supported things like the Hearing Protection Act and getting like you know suppressors removed from the registry and, and making them not NFA items anymore and basically making suppressors where they're much easier to get because they do help protect your hearing. But, however, I think it's worth noting for those that, you know, maybe aren't familiar so much with um, NFA and with suppressors and, and what they really do, you know, in terms of <laughs> reducing the amount of volume, okay, uh, the thing about that, all right, when you're dealing with suppressors is that, okay, if the round is supersonic, you're still going to get a bit of a crack. And look, I don't want to get into the minutia of net sound reduction and all of the technical things that go into how we meter suppressors, you know, exactly what that equates to and, and what they're doing to help protect our hearing. Because it is an ammunition and platform specific combination of traits that determine how quiet the gun is going to wind up being at the end of the day. Like, all right, is it supersonic ammo? Is it subsonic ammo? Is it a 22? Are we talking a 50 cal? I mean, there's a lot of factors there that can determine how loud or quiet something is going to be, especially if we're saying, oh, this suppressor is supposed to, you know, knock the edge off. We always hear people say, oh, it's going to knock the edge off. It's still loud, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks that suppressors are like some movie gadget that you're going to, you know, like in the movies, it goes pew and makes like some little bitty tiny sound that's almost you can't hear. Now, sure, a 22 with a really good can with a lot of volume and a subsonic round, sure, they're pretty quiet, dare I say approaching movie quiet, but not in the way that Hollywood tends to, to think that suppressors actually suppress the sound of a gunshot. So without going down that rabbit hole in this video, I know Chad probably is itching to talk about a bunch of random stuff with that. Let's no. stick to EarPro because, um, but you should just know that suppressors do reduce uh, the, the amount of, of physical pressure and noise pressure that a firearm produces but it's not a end-all, do-all scenario. It can still harm your hearing. Some suppressors are right on the cuff to where, you know, you still need to wear ear pro even mm. when you're using suppressors. So it's a mm. common misconception that suppressors as a whole and holistically are a substitute for hearing protection. They are not a substitute. They are meant to be an aid to help in just, hey, reducing those numbers that much more so that with your ear pro, you can shoot longer mm -hmm. and for longer strings without any damage to your hearing. Is that probably a good synopsis it overall? Is. I was going to mention, mm -hmm. that's why you guys see us wearing ear protection when we're shooting suppressed ARs especially because the the sound pressure level is being reduced by the suppressor down to about that hearing safe threshold of 140 dB in And then the ear cases. pro just drives the, it home. The ear pro reduces it down to about 120 which at that point we can literally be out there for hours on end shooting and not expose ourselves to, you know, the sound pressure level amount that would cause us hearing damage. Yeah. So, so, so the basic way to kind of approach this thing is that um, the suppressor helps in protecting your hearing, but it's not the only tool to protect your mm -hmm. hearing. Like, don't assume that just because a gun has a suppressor on it that it's not going to hurt your hearing. In fact, many of you have been to like large, you know, maybe you know machine gun shoots or you've been to like a range day or some type of industry event where you're out there and there's all these suppressors and all right, they do suppress time and they're shooting suppressed only and it's loud as crap. Like you think, what? Suppressors? This is loud. Like you hear this pitchy, high frequency, you know, kind of, you know, ear piercing, you know, 
bullet breaking the sound barrier and it's got a supersonic crack that's almost as loud or louder than the gunshot would have been anyway in some cases. So it is an ammo and platform specific type of thing in terms of how you know quiet you really can get it. So anyway, let's get into some ear pro, but I, I think that's important to mention because it's a good suppressors basis. are making a huge, huge splash in a in a much wider group of people than what they did a decade or two ago. Like more people are owning suppressors now than ever. So I think it's important for people to understand that even though you might own a few suppressed rifles or a suppressed pistol, that you still need to treat it with some respect and still understand that even though it's it's quieter, it may not still be hearing safe. So Anyway, with the basics out of the way, with the basics, and look, yeah. look, there's a lot more detail that we could go into, but that's really out of the scope of this particular video. Mm -hmm. um, so, all right, start basic. What, what were the first <laughs> what were the first things that you probably used? Foamies, foamies right? or the uh, 3M uh, plugs from back. You know, remember yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the green little green container? plug cases that you used to get in the military that used to make you hang them from your from your shirt, you know, and you have your little ear plug case and they would come with a little tube. All right. And. They would be these 3M earplugs that were kind of just rubber, and you would take the little tube and put it over the little stem, and that's what you use to put it in your ear. A lot of Not people don't know that's what those are for. So you take that little tube, and you go, whoop, and you cram it in your ear, and they work fairly mm -hmm. well for what they are. Uh, yeah, they were like, they had like three little flanges on them, and yeah. that just kind of helps block the sound coming into your ear canal. I mean, it's real basic. They're okay. Foamies, okay? You roll these up. Into like a little, into a little tube like that, all right? And then you just go, whoop, in your ear canal, and then they go, they expand, and they block the sound pressure from getting into your ear canal, right? These are real basic, and they're corded, you know, so you don't lose them, but, I mean, we've all lost these things numerous times. Here's something I want to mention about the foamies as well that I think is uh, worth noting in mm -hmm. this particular case. Uh, so, like, for instance, Caldwell... All right, has these little range plug packs, and it's basically these exact plugs, uh, but in a tin pack. Mm -hmm. So the way that a lot of people approach foamies, just so you know, is that foamies are one somewhat disposable, two they're cheap enough to where if you lose them, it's no big deal. Three, if you need to loan them out at the range and give them to people, you know, you can throw a few of these in your range bag, and you've got some extra plugs to hand out to somebody who will inevitably forget to bring ear plug ear pro. I'm guilty. I show up to the range all the time without ear pro. It's normal. Look, we all forget. It's okay, right? But that's why the range plugs are a redundancy in case you forget your normal ear pro. Mm -hmm. But, all right, now let's look at the sound reduction, though. 33 noise reduction rating. Uh, net sound reduction. Right. Net sound reduction. Noise reduction rating is what it says on there. But Noise reduction But what rating. I'm saying, though, is that even though these are foamies, they still reduce the sound pretty well. I mean, for what they are and what they cost... They are, for the most part, a pretty effective way of protecting your hearing. So the and reason, one of the reasons why um, it has such a high, well, noise reduction rating, or as I I would call it, a net sound reduction net sound. because of the su suppressor reviews and crap, um, is because the foam, it fills the space in your ear canal a lot better than three flanges will. So it's literally more surface area to actually block that incoming sound. That's why the foam earplugs tend to do a lot better uh, than the flange style. Um, and they're now, cheaper. They are cheaper. Now, when you were talking about stacking EarPro earlier on in the video, um, you know, guys like Jerry Mitchell right, and other competitive shooters who shoot all the time, they shoot millions of rounds a year, right? I mean, all over the country. They will stack EarPro. So if you use these or just the individual foamies, all right, you're getting 30, it'll say, say 30 dB reduction just for the sake of easy math, right? Because we're just uncouth rednecks, right? That's right. All right, so 30 dB <laughs> with the foamies, and then you drop some ears on top, all right? And then you're getting 20 dB at least on top of that. So that's a 50 decibel reduction. Now, when we were talking earlier in the video about uh, certain platforms and things like that. If you're running like an I know AR, where you're going. Yeah, if you're running with a loud a, muzzle brake, <laughs> yes. If you're running an AR with a muzzle brake on it, e the sound pressure level at the ear is ridiculous. I mean, you can get up into like the low 170s on certain guns. All right, just because that's so much pressure coming out of that brake to reduce that recoil, and you've got to have a hefty amount of hearing protection to get that down to a safe level. So if you're just wearing, say, these Howard lights and you're getting like 20 dB reduction, 
you're not getting into a hearing safe threshold. You might think that you're protecting your hearing, but you're still getting 150 dB into your ear canal. I mean, does would, that make sense? One would certainly argue that, especially if you're in the competitor world and you're running some type of ridiculous muzzle brake, that doubling up is probably not a bad idea. Yeah. Now, what is another uh, situation you'd want to double up? Okay, we'll talk about that. Um, for instance, all right, you got a loud muzzle brake, maybe put some uh, M3 plugs or foamies in and then run your other ear pro. That's a great way to double up. But what would be another situation you want to double up? Maybe you handle explosives. Maybe you're mm. around binary and things blowing up. Maybe you're around 50 cal machine guns and other loud things. Like in the military, you know, we used 120 millimeter mortars. I mean, those things are loud, right? So there are many situations where you want to double up. Even just being inside a military vehicle, like tankers, a lot of times will double up because mm. They're loud. They're big, clunky pieces of machinery with all kind of moving little parts and levers and scary things that, that make noise, and, and, and it's loud, right? So in a military environment, um, you know, protecting your hearing is equally important. I mean, yes, you want to survive the day, and you want to protect your comrades, but what else do you need to be able to do? you got to be able to communicate. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to protect your hearing in the process. So EarPro has taken on a much different role over what it was even just 20 or 30 years ago. Now, even civilians and just average folks across the board have access to so much better ear pro uh, than what we had a few mm -hmm. you know, short years ago. I mean, like these Bilsons right here. We, we literally had these ear pro for like at least 25 years, I would imagine. I don't know where these came from. Uh, they were either my dad or your dad. So one, one of our family members owned these, and, and we got them. But mm -hmm. this is just like a basic set, super, super basic set of basic, you know, phone-style ear pro. And you look in there, it's literally, it's just... White foam. Look. It looks like a ball of cotton. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> literally, it's literally just cotton that's inside of here. Now, don't get me wrong, like to knock the edge off and to mow the grass or run a mm -hmm. lawnmower or do a little shooting with your shotgun or sight your deer rifle mm -hmm. in. Okay, like our our grandparents and dads and, mm -hmm. and family members and uncles over the years, you know, these have fared quite well for a wide variety of different people. But in the modern age, there's definitely a better mousetrap than this. You know, that could double as fire tender. That's what I'm saying. Know. So I mean, I, that's that's pretty crude all right, compared so, to some of the other options oh yeah. we have here. I think uh, I remember a photo of us. I think you had those hanging off of your belt or maybe on your head. I'm not sure. And well, you guys are seeing that photo right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go uh, ahead, and put your freaking comments down there. Lord I know Almighty. you're going to give us a hard time about how skinny we used to be, <laughs> but that's all right. You know. We don't look at things in years anymore. We look at things pounds. in terms of pounds. Like, oh, that was about, I don't know, 30, 40 pounds ago, 50 pounds ago. I don't know, something to that effect. So, anyhow, these getting old sucks, y'all. I just, just know that. <laughs> these are Howard Light T3s, and I'm actually not even sure where these came from. Somebody may have left them at range day. Look how big these things are. I feel like Princess Leia. They yes. are rather large. Now, so this is an example of a modern set of Ear Pro that isn't electronic but certainly has a, maybe a greater degree of comfort and sound reduction than something like these old school Filsoms, okay? So they still make old school ear pro, mm -hmm. but maybe a little bit more comfortable and more capable. These are but, real cheap too. They're, and they're they are very inexpensive. inexpensive. Yeah. I think where the rubber really meets the road and what I want to be able to articulate in today's video is that the electronic muffs are certainly the future mm -hmm. and and. I don't want to get all Billy Mays on y'all, but I think we want to discuss some of these because they're really cool, right? Now, we've used um, the Howard Lights over the years quite a bit. I have recently been exposed to these Earshield Rangers, and these are from Otis Technologies. Also, these Caldwells are really nice. So there's a lot of great ear pro out there that doesn't have to break the bank, and it gives you a lot of flexibility. Let's say that you're just out cutting the grass or whatever, and you want to just pipe your tunes in. Look, all these Ear Pro, you can run a 1-8 uh, headphone jack, and you can listen to your i, uh, your, um, what, what do you call iPods? it, your iPod? Yeah. I, I, anyway, Dude. you can use your iPod or whatever so on these. Uh, also, let's say you have uh, radio traffic you want to monitor. Now, we're going to kind of get into the commo and communications aspect of this. And also, Chad has some really cool um, electronic ear probe he's going to show you as well that is sort of a new thing. But these are nice to, that you can add that one eighth jack and you can pipe in your music. You can monitor radio traffic. All right, but what if you want to discuss the radio traffic back and forth? Like you need a mic, right? I know a lot of you folks 
you see like your SF and Ranger dudes running around in buildings and they've got their ear pro, they've got their, you know, it's built into their helmet and they've got a microphone that's so they can communicate with each other. Look, combat fog is scary. When everybody starts shooting, it's chaos. It is literal chaos and you've got to be able to articulate what's going on. Hey, he ran over there or hey, I'm here. Or, hey, don't shoot. I'm over here. Or, hey, I'm reloading. Like there's all the communication, command and control that we have to be able to keep in a noisy environment. So modern ear pro has come a long way in allowing people to not only drown out the gunshots and protect their hearing from the really loud stuff, and but also mitigate the combat fog and create an environment where not only is your hearing protected, but you're also still able to hear each other mm -hmm. talk. Now, if you've ever been inside of a building where guns are going off inside a building, it's loud, y'all. It's real, real, real loud. It's highly unpleasant. The concussion hurts. It's just like, you feel like it. Like every your, time a gun, sh like yeah. you feel the gunshot in your chest yeah. when you're inside a building. Those pressure, that pressure cannot just escape out, out all around you. It's contained within a room. And if you are not wearing ear pro, it is going to hurt. Your ears are going to hurt. They're going to ring. You're not mm -hmm. going to hear someone right next to you could be yelling at you at the mm -hmm. top of their lungs and you're going to struggle to hear them. So that's where the rubber meets the road on this let's, stuff. Let's just say that if you're exposed to sound pressure levels over a certain amount, it could literally kill you. I mean, like being in close proximity to an explosive or something like that, it yeah. literally can kill you with sound, more it's or less. Just the pressure that it, it? Yeah, the pressure that it generates. The electronic ear pro are really neat because they come a long way. They do. They they use microphones. Uh, most of the time, the the more basic uh, electronic earmuffs and such. Um, what they'll do is you'll turn them on. They're usually powered by AAA batteries that are you know, readily available and accessible on the outside of the, uh, the unit here. You just pull a cover off of pretty much all of these here we have. They just have a small cover that comes off. Batteries go in. You have a dial, turns the units on, power them up, and then you can control the volume. Now, what they'll do is they'll use the microphones to enhance what's going on around you. So you can hear people talking, you can hear wildlife, you can hear deer walking through the woods. I mean, a lot of hunters will use these. Um, but the moment that a gunshot or a, a high-pressure event happens, um, before the peak impulse, these things will basically mute those microphones and prevent that sound from coming through the electronics and in, into your ear canal. Um, and right after that sound pressure drops, they come right back up. And then you can hear everything going on around you again. Um, there are some higher end models that have like selectable modes where you can have an enhanced mode or just a normal mode for like general conversation. And basically like you, you hear what would be going on around you if you weren't wearing ear protection, like normal sound levels. Right. So, you know, it, it is very interesting that you mentioned that specifically because these things the modern electronic ear pro are so awesome when you're going hunting because, you know, if you want to be able to hear a game animal walking up, you can hear them from forever away. And mm. it actually <laughs> can hinder your hunting environment a little bit because you hear so well that you hear every little random thing and you're like, what was that? And it's you don't realize they might be... 80 yards away, it, you or, know, it might be a squirrel just, yeah. you know, dicking around <laughs> That's what I was going to say. So, you think it's like some Boone and Crockett, but it's literally like a chipmunk yeah. behind you. <laughs> now, I have heard deer and hogs walk up on me, mm. like, with these ear pro, and it is really cool to be able to hear their footsteps. And over time, you, you kind of begin to kind of pick out, like, all right, is that a hog or a deer? Especially when they're coming up behind you. Mm -hmm. If you're in a ladder stand and they're going to walk by you, it's kind of cool because you can um, you can sit there and you kind of think. And, and I love the I love the process of all right, is that a hog or is that a deer? And then you get that that confirmation as mm -hmm. to what it was. And you can always tell hogs because they kind of trot. Like they when do. they're coming in, they, you can kind of hear you know like. They're more steady pace as they're walking. They got tiny little hooves too. They do, and you and you get to kind of pick those things out. Yeah. So it's so wild that this modern ear pro. I was just wearing these mm -hmm. for a second just to try them yeah, out. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but they're nice. I was using these the other day for the first time, and those are comfortable. Um, what I like so much about these is they come standard with gel pad or gel cups, right? And I noticed that they're the way these are designed. There's kind of like a little well in here, and you got kind of two layers to the cup itself. And the gel cups are just a different material. They're they're real squishy, and they really mold to your your face, you know, the side of your head and everything. And they help seal better than a stock set of ear cups. 
yeah. would, you know, especially as they get older, the ear cups get harder, and then you wind up with gaps and things like that, especially if you're wearing like glasses. You're not going to get full coverage, so therefore you're not going to get the full sound reduction that the ear protection are capable of. But for, for coming stock with gel cups, which usually are like a twenty dollar upgrade. Yeah. Um like I had to recently upgrade all of the gel or all the pads on my Howard lights. I've got three sets of these I usually keep in the uh range bag. And they're like twenty, twenty five dollars a piece to upgrade them. I want to mention a couple of things about the electronic ear pro. So let's talk let's talk about some pros and cons. I know we kind of talked about, you know, this stuff in general, but let let's kind of try to break down objectively like some things to like and not like about it. Well one thing would be that, okay, let's say you don't want to be able to hear better, and if the mode that you have available doesn't allow you to just to, to remove that aspect from it, that might be a tiny detractor. But as Chad said, that there are some models out there that have some adjustable, you know, and, and you can turn arguably the volume up and you down can turn the volume mm-hmm. up and down. So, yeah. of course, you can do that, and it'll still drown out the sound just fine. Um, one thing I can say about... Um, these Otis's that I do like, as Chad said, I do like the gels that come stock. And I think from a comfort level, this is probably the most comfortable set of electronic ear pro that I've ever had right out of the box. We've been using the Howard lights for years and they are bomb proof. They do hold up quite well. Uh, we've only had maybe one or two actually like get ran over or get, you know, damaged beyond repair. But for the most part, they're all pretty freaking rugged. Mm-hmm. I do like the Caldwells as well. I feel like these probably have, I, I think out of all three of these ear pro that we have, the Caldwells do tend to pick up some of the soft noises, maybe a little bit better than, than the, than the uh, Howard lights and the Otis. So it's kind of hard to say. And I, I would hate to say, Oh, I'm going to recommend this style or that style or this brand or that brand. Like I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to come across as like recommending a specific brand. Like, I would say that everyone's different in terms of like what they want out of a set of ear pro. Like most, you know, gun shops that you go to probably have a pair laying around that you can try out, you know, maybe a store model that you can look at. Um, the other thing I want to mention, and I know Chad's probably thinking about this too, mm-hmm. but like there's a lot of, um, of extra accessories you can buy for your ear pro as well. And our friends at uh, Flatline Fiber, uh, make these awesome padded wraps. All right, and you can see there's a Velcro name tag on top, so the Chad can um, have his name tag on there, so nobody steals his ear pro. Like Eric. Well, hey, it is what it is. And then on, on this particular set of uh, wraps, you've also got the ability to clip it onto your gear. Okay, so that's real handy. So mm-hmm. I really like his work there. And uh, one thing I'll, I'll just say is that um, the Howard lights probably do leave a little bit to be desired in the comfort level. A little bit. Not only in the stock gels, but also just the the stock, you know, headband. Mm. So that does make, you know, purchasing something like this a little bit more of a, an important thing. Uh, I haven't really dealt with the Peltors that much. I know that's another brand that people talk yeah, about. I've, Have you really used Peltors so over the years? A, a friend of mine, he he ran the Peltors for quite some time, and I've, I've used his a few times. And really, they're not terribly different than the uh, Howard lights or anything else. Um, they do have nice gel cups on them. Yeah. So, uh, his, his set were comms compatible though. And when you get into the comms compatible ear protection, I mean, you're talking about, you know, 600 to $800 in most cases, you know, some of those sets can That's get a huge price difference. Yeah. But it, it, they're comms cap- uh, compatible though. Yeah, Cause you're talking these, these guys here, these Otis's than, are like 59 or 50 bucks. Yeah. Most of these that we're showing, they're, they're well south of a hundred dollars. Now yeah, there are some, easily. there are some newer Howard lights that I noticed that are Bluetooth compatible now. That was one thing that a lot of people wanted to see was Bluetooth compatible, um, hearing protection. And now you can hook up your phone and whatever, listen to music, take phone calls, things like that, which is really handy. I mean, while you're at the range, um, because, you know, people like, people like listening to music, I guess, while they're shooting and stuff. But. And that probably segues really well into mm-hmm. those autos. Yeah. So the, the autos here, now these are a high end set of <clears throat> in ear, ear protection. Okay. And they come in a small case. All right. And the case acts as, the charger, okay. So you and, and the storage case, so like obviously. AirPods, yeah, pretty much like AirPods. They're, they're yeah. but you know they come with uh, foamies. They come with uh, multiple sizes of three flange uh, inserts and things like that. I usually use the three flange. Um, unfortunately, the the foams are a little bit too large for my ear canals. Uh, they're they're very uncomfortable over long periods of time at the range. 
But the three flange are very comfortable. I've worn these things all day while we're out filming. I mean, we're talking like six to eight hours and they're very comfortable. The battery life is insane. Since I've had these since December, okay, this video is like we're filming it right here in March, but um, I have never charged this case again and it's at 60%. And I've used these every time I've been out to the range to do normal work and also to do like testing, uh, suppressor metering, things like that. I mean, I've been out to the range probably 30 or 40 times, I would imagine, in that time frame. And so like, not unlike AirPods. They they last. Brandy I, bought me a set of AirPods back nice. in, in December for Christmas. Mm. And same thing. Yeah. I bet I have not charged that AirPod case since December yeah. and they're still holding up. Now, um, these are expensive. I mean, these these top out around like four hundred bucks. Mm. Sometimes they're on sale. And I look, I've been looking at these for at least two years and I'm thinking, oh, I don't want to buy it all four hundred bucks for the for years. You a lot know? of money for your pro. But around Christmas time I got a bunch of Amazon gift cards. And I was like, uh -huh. yeah, all right. So it kind of eases the pain a little bit. I let some of my family buy them for me. So right on. Um, but anyways, if you can get a set of these, I'd highly recommend them. They're they're very useful because they have that dual mode that I was talking about earlier. You basically just put the ears in, you know, and then you push the little button, hold it down, and it'll go boop, 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 power on, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you hit the button again, it'll put you into the enhanced mode. All right, they and that's start, where you can hear everything. Yeah, that's where it enhances everything going on around you, but they start up in just a normal mode where you could hear normal sounds. It's and just like drown you're, out the loud Yeah, sound. it's just like you're not wearing ears at all, but then it gives you that sound protection. Yeah, so, so a little bit both both worlds. Yeah, but they are very very handy. I don't have any to show off right here in this particular video, but Caldwell actually does make a set of rechargeable ear pro like the autos that are less than half the Lay. price. They're like $169 and they work quite well. When we went down to the Romp the Swamp, we had a few sets to play with. Um, I wasn't able to locate them in order to put them in this video, but it is worth noting that there are options that are much more affordable, like the Caldwells mm -hmm. that you can get into if you don't want to buy something like the Autos. That is a rather expensive set of EarPro, but mm -hmm. it, I think we really covered like a lot of different tech. I mean, when you're getting mm -hmm. into the Peltors and getting into the comms and things, um, that is a very specific and I don't want to say a niche market because well, it's it definitely something that people you know need access to. Uh, it could be nothing more than okay, maybe you do loud events. All right, maybe you're a concert goer or, or not a concert goer. Maybe you put on concerts, okay, and you've got to be able to talk to the sound guy or something. Having those in ears is a great way. Like, hey, it could be reckless abandon on stage and there's some crazy thing going on at a concert, and I can go. Hey man, uh, the vocal mic's a little low on this particular, you know, hey, can you bump this guy up? So there's other, you know, it's not just hunting and outdoors. Like there's other reasons to have ear pro too. I mean, like I went to see Joe Bonamassa the other day and like he's running 80 watt twins and those suckers move some air, man. They're loud. And you know, I'm sitting 40 feet from them suckers and the, you got, you know, two 80 watt twins moving some air. I mean, it's, that's a lot of, of volume. So Ear Pro is a universal thing that can benefit a lot of people in a lot of different ways. So okay. we get into the Peltors mm -hmm. and the communications, not just military use, right? Also, you know, concert, you know, people doing sound reproduction need to communicate. It might be guys on the racetrack needing to communicate. Like you notice the pit oh, yeah. crews have their co combo and things. So That's a common thing. And it's not uncommon for people to have access to a little bit mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, co communications yeah. in a loud environment. All I was going to say was um, most of the manufacturers that do hearing protection, they're not only geared towards, you know, the, the shooting world. They're geared towards other loud uh, events and things like that, loud professions. Sure. So that's where you you know, mentioned like the pit crews at the racetrack and things like that. Um, I will say that you know Foresters, auto, yeah. So Peltor, chainsaws. yeah, Peltor and other companies they they make ear protection or hearing protection for other industries. Um, now I will say that these auto in ears and there are several other in ear. Um, models that are out there by various manufacturers that are comms compatible. They have the little tube and everything. You just hook it up and everything like that, and you can run it into your radio. And we'll say that there is there is a need for that on the civilian side of things, like non-military side of things, because there's plenty of people that are, you know, small groups that train together, you know, and they might want to have communications if they ever really needed to gather up and actually protect the community. So they'll have, you know, plate carriers, they'll have battle belts, they'll have you know, uh, bump helmets. And then you can buy adapters for various 
uh, over the ear um, hearing protection that will integrate into your helmets. Auto makes them, Peltor makes them. They even have some that people have modified for the Howard Lights, unless there's some available now for the Howard Lights, just you know aftermarket. But um, they'll they'll at least have that capability of running them on their helmet. But then the comms are just an added bonus. But they are expensive. I mean, there's really just no cheap alternative for communications. And then you got to have a radio to go along with it as well. Yeah, so, and I, and and I train, think so. at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, I would think that probably the average person at large can get by with something like this Absolutely. for their everyday uh, type of thing. I mean, for, for just everyday shooting. I mean, something like the Howard Lights or the Caldwells or the Otises, any of these, they're all kind of in the same price range. I, I would say, honestly, out of these three, I'd probably lean towards the Otis ones just because, you know, they got the factory gel cups that are mm-hmm. nice. I mean, that's a nice upgrade right out of the box. And I love the thick padding. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they are they are very, very comfy and nice. I mean, you could throw a set of the uh uh flat line fiber uh wraps on this and have you one jam up set of ear pro for well south of a hundred bucks. And honestly, as long as you take care of them, they're gonna last a long time. You'll go through some AAA batteries. Um I'm Pretty sure the Caldwell and the Otis have this feature, but I know one thing about the Howard Lights is if you leave them on, they have an auto off mm-hmm. feature after a certain amount of time. Yeah, they'll uh, so the that's nice to keep the battery life nice and long. Uh, that is one thing about the Howard Lights I do like is the auto off feature because mm-hmm. I leave them on all the time, and you just basically re- um, bring that wheel all the way back until it clicks, and then click it back, and then they'll come back on. So that's kind of a nice feature. Basically, all these things will last, as far as I've, as far as I've seen, they'll last over 300 hours. Oh, yeah. You know, the battery life is just insane. And mm-hmm. if you and use... It's re- only one AAA. Two. Yeah. Two AAAs. Yeah, two AAAs. Oh, okay. And I use the rechargeable uh, Interloops in here, the same ones that I use for camera equipment and all. And literally, they, they last forever. And if you just got to turn it on one day and it doesn't work, well, I mean, batteries are dead. I mean, that's the only thing. So. so in this video, I think what we really wanted to try to accomplish is to give people an idea of the range of cost on EarPro, the range of features, you know, what they're good for, what they're not good for. Hopefully we articulated as best we could. And I really wanted to spend some time um, talking about suppressors because I know NFA is a hot subject for a lot of people. Tons of folks are getting into suppressors and with good reason because they are extremely useful and they can absolutely help protect your hearing but it's still going to, in most cases, be in concert with some type of traditional ear pro. Do not assume that a suppressor is a substitute for ear pro. It is just meant to enhance and help uh, the overall net sound reduction of the firearm in question uh, to help protect your hearing and allow you to shoot over a longer period of time. So um, I think it was a pretty good video. I really enjoyed this one. because I'm sure we is, left something out. This is something that it's very easy to overlook. Right. Everyone wants to go into the gun shop and buy their, you know, cool space gun and their fancy optics and their suppressor and all their ammo and mags and a gun case. And it's it's super easy to think, oh, well, not think about the ear pro. Right. Like ear pro is a consideration you need to maybe spend a little bit of time thinking about and make the right decision. But the nice thing about it is that most of the stuff we showed off is affordable enough to where you could buy a set and try it out. And if you don't like it, maybe try another brand like so. You know, I will, so something to, something to look at. Yeah, I will say for those of you who are still here, um, if you do happen to get in suppressors or whatever, um, I would I would implore you to wear ear protection most of the time, especially shooting rifles. Even if you're shooting like subsonic three hundred blackout on an AR, they're still not they're still not generally hearing safe over the long term. And I know that I've damaged my hearing from shooting suppressed guns without ear protection, especially ARs. Yeah. You can get away with it for a while on like bolt actions and things like that, and 22s, PCCs that are quieter at the ear. But when I started metering suppressors more regularly and collecting all that data, I really started to realize just how loud even suppressed gunfire was and what it was doing to my you know hearing over the past you know, few years prior to that. That's right. You know, so if I could implore anybody out there, it's like, hey, you get suppressors, you know, still wear your hearing protection. And you should always wear hearing protection at the range anyways, of some kind. So, well, you know, back in 05, okay, I've got a lot of high frequency hearing loss in my left ear. Yeah, you do. From dropping mortars. All right. And what do you do? You drop the mortar and you do this number. Bloop. Or you do this number, right? Yep. Yeah. It was usually on the left side. So yeah, drop it and then, right? Boom! But this ear is still exposed, and you don't, and you think, 
I mean, that's a lot of powder going on. When a 120 millimeter mortar goes off, it sounds like the breath of God, God going off. It is loud. I'm talking, it sounds like a nuclear bomb going off right by your face. You it's remember, loud. You remember those little frequency tests that we would do? Like Brandy and I would play one. Like, all right, tell me when you can't hear it. And it'd be on for like three seconds. And Eric's like, I can't hear it anymore. And Brandy and I are like, Woo! you know, it's still going up and up and up. And I mean, I lost it close to the top end. So I don't think I have that much of that high frequency loss, but boy, you. I've got real oh, bad. Got high real bad. So look, protect your hearing, y'all. That's what I'm trying to get out here. Okay. Don't, don't be like me. Don't be dumb. Okay. Like protect your hearing because once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. It, it doesn't come back. Like <laughs> that's it. So wanted to break this video down. Hopefully this will help some of you. I know we've got a lot of new gun owners out there. And so I know some of this stuff might be kind of in the basic one on one category for people, but I think it's important to put these videos out as a service because people are hungry for information. They're looking for more information. They're trying to get educated. So if we can provide a resource to help people in their, you know, journey to uh, protect themselves better and to, you know, be safe, then by all means, we want to do that. So have a great day. Many more videos on the way. Really appreciate y'all tuning in today. Uh, big thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. Thank you for being a part of what we do. Uh, go over to Ballistic Inc. and pick yourself up a new t-shirt. That's one way you can support us directly if you wish. If you do decide that you want to go over to Otis and pick yourself up a set of these EarPro, we do have a discount code with Otis. It's IV8888, and you can get yourself 15% off. Uh, so if you're looking for some ear pro, maybe check Otis out and you got 15 points off out the gate. That's kind of nice, mm -hmm. especially these are pretty affordable already. So that's nice to get extra 15% off. Big thanks to everybody. Appreciate you tuning in. You got anything else? Nope. We're good. Many more videos on the way, y'all. Appreciate you. We'll see you soon.